Hello, dear students. Today we are going to start with a revision lecture series, and uh, this uh, revising your uh, chapters is very important for entrance exams and a quick revision is always necessary. So keeping that in mind, what we have done is that we designed a lecture series that will quickly help you to revise your concepts, formulas, and chapters so that you can handle problems uh, very effectively. Okay, so let's start. So we have, we are starting with bulk properties of matter. So let's let's continue. So we know that when you have this bulk properties of matter, the first topic that we encounter is elasticity as it is and its causes. What is elastic? Elasticity. Elasticity means that if you apply stress to a material, then if the material after removing the stress is able to regain its shape, we say that the material is elastic. And why does it able? Why is how it is able to regain the shape? Because the bonds between the atoms are like small springs, right? The bonds between the atoms are like small springs. And once a deformation force is applied, these springs store the restoring force. And the moment we remove the external force, the restoring force uh, retains the shape of the body, restores the shape of the body. So there are two very important concepts involved here. One is the concept of the stress, and the other is the concept of strain the concept of stress is the external effect and the strain means the deformation so there are three kinds of stresses and they result in three kinds of strains now we'll take them one by one so remember that stress is nothing but we measure it as force by area so f by a now it depends on how we apply the force let us take a rod which is hooked with a wall and if I apply a force that elongates the length of the rod, then this kind on, on, an, on an area, say small a, which is the area of cross section, then this kind of citrus is called as tensile citrus. And the tensile citrus would be a force by area to which the force is applied. And we have the deformation in the length of the rod that is measured as longitudinal strain. And longitudinal strain would be the change in length divided by the original length. If a deforming force is applied to a rod, say they have a body, a cylinder here, and I apply a deforming force to it, then there will be deformation in the length. Then this deformation is the, again, a longitudinal kind of strain. But the citrus in here is called as compressive citrus. Compressive citrus is also a kind of longitudinal stress. Then we have two more important kinds of deformations and one is volume deformation and the other is the shear deformation volume deformation normally occurs when a body is taken in a fluid then it experiences pressure from all sides that results in the decrease in the volume so it is the pressure of the fluid that measures volumetric stress so volumetric stress or volume stress volume stress is just the pressure and nothing else it's the pressure of the fluid Okay, and the volumetric strain is change in volume divided by original volume. Since the volume decreases, we normally write it as minus delta V by V. And there is shear strain. What is shear strain? If we apply a parallel force on a surface such that the one layer of the body moves related to the other layer. So suppose the bottom layer here is fixed. So I fix this layer and I apply force, parallel force to the upper layer, the upper layer would shift with respect to the lower layer, say by an angle phi. That phi is the measure of the shear strain. That can also be written as, suppose L is the deformation and capital L is the length of, of the side, then L by L, which is also the angle phi, that measure is the shear strain. So we have three kinds of strains. What are they? The longitudinal strain, the volumetric strain and the shear strain right and these are three kinds of deformations and there would be three kinds of citruses we have the longitudinal citrus and then we have the volume stress and the shear stress right let's move to the next now we talk about the next topic is about Hooke's law and Hooke's law you know is citrus is proportional to strain and there are lots of questions that come in this part of the topic so you have to be a little careful so Hooke's law 
is simply the relation between the citrus and strain and the citrus by strain is a constant which we call as elastic constant it says that the relation is uh, linear between citrus and strain within the elastic limit now we define what's called as Young's modulus if we have a rod so if we have a wire and we elongate this wire applying a load then the elongation of the wire is longitudinal and the load is the longitudinal citrus so we define Young's modulus as this longitudinal citrus which is porous by area divided by longitudinal strain which is change in length here l divided with the original length right and then we can design an experiment to get the data and verify this law so there is an experiment this is the experimental setting where you have a main scale and a vernier scale you want to measure a very small change in the length then we draw a graph between citrus and strain citrus and strain for a material say steel okay and we find that that from o to a the body obeys hook's law All right and uh, citrus is directly proportional to strain so a is that elastic limit and beyond a to b now the hook's law is not obeyed but the body is still elastic and we call this as the proportional limit and from proportional limit to we have a this point b where you call as yield point up to point c the body is uh, having a permanent deformation this is called as permanent set big but that permanent deformation is very small right normally less than the one percent of the original length of the body but beyond c the body elongates very fast even if the change in the stress is very small for a small variation the citrus a huge strain is noted and normally this is the region when you can draw sheets and wires from the material right and then the at point e the uh, wire will break down we call it as fracture point now what does the grab give you the slope of this curve within the elastic limit would measure the youngest modulus and the area under the curve would measure as the work per unit volume and that work per unit volume is 1 by 2 citrus into strain or 1 by 2 citrus into strain into volume is the work the work that was done in elongating the string or that work done can we can calculate it by we say we elongate it from 0 to delta l the wire then it is integral of this is f because this x is delta l dx and then simple integration you can see that x is x square by 2 it turns out that the work done in elongating through delta l a wire of length l is y a delta l square divided by twice l naught you need to memorize this result because you have to apply directly this if a numerical is asked in the examination right and uh, keep this in mind let us go to the next slide now if you have a wire that is suspended and a mass m is attached to it then the force that's external that's acting on the wire is mg and it's acting on the cross section of the wire now if we apply the hook's law here or if we say citrus is proportional to strain we know that force by area is equal to the youngest modulus and change in length divided by original length or you can write youngest more change in length is equal to f l divided by y a this is a very very important result that you need to keep in mind this f here is mg so i can also write this as mg l by y a remember in the problem if this m is removed and directly a force f is applied then you have to write delta l is f l by y a so keep this in mind this is very very important formula that elongation of a rod is equal to the force that we apply the external force that we apply into the length of the rod divided by n is modulus into area of cross section many variations of this are asked in the examination one more important point here to remember is that you can write the same formula as f is equal to y a divided by l 
into delta x since after removing the force the body comes back the wire comes back to its original shape therefore we can imagine this as a spring constant k y a by l can be think thought of as a spring constant we can think y l by a as a spring constant and we can remove our wire uh, with a spring whose spring constant is k such that k has a form of y a by l this visualization is very important and this mapping helps us solving very complicated problems in this chapter so let us take up the application of it now suppose i have two rods one rod is of length l1 other is of l2 the length n1 has area a1 and young's modulus y1 the length l2 has area a2 and young's modulus y2 and i want to load it or apply force and i want to find elongation i can replace this problem by two springs whose spring constants k1 and k2 are a1 y1 by l1 a2 y2 by l2 and then i since these are two springs in series i know the effect to k is k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2 and i can use this concept to easily figure out the total elongation if an external force is applied in case you have three rods one two and three two of them are in series and then these two are in parallel i can replace the three rods with three springs and then i can use these two as series and then they are in parallel with k3 and the elongation can be easily worked out these kinds of problems look difficult but they are very simple to do all you need is to apply your concepts in a neat and clean way okay suppose now i have a rod so keep it in mind that if you have a rod and you have a force f you apply and you fix this rod at one end then the elongation delta l as we found is f l divided by y a in case the rod is free and is on a smooth surface and then we pull it with force f then is there any elongation in the rod normally students think that there is no elongation but there is because the tension varies inside the rod and therefore elongation can be worked out by taking a small element and then looking at the elongation of that small element and integrating it out but you don't need to do that all you remember is that it is half of what is in this case so it is just one by two factor that comes here and rest remain is the same so it is one by two f l divided by a y that is the answer in this case so the next problem is that you have a rod now the rod has mass m what is the elongation due to its own weight again what we do is that since we are finding elongation due to its own weight the whole weight of the rod acts at the center so effectively we take length as l by 2 so delta l we know is f l divided by y a now i take this f as l by 2 and m as f as m g l as l by 2 so l by twice y a so you can easily cook the answer and find out the answer that what is the elongation due to your own due to the own weight of the rod but keep in mind the proper way of doing it is that you cut an element and then you look at the elongation of one small element and then you integrate over the entire rod the answer is same so one can use the concept of center of mass the answer would be same and if you can follow a lengthy route of integration the answer would remain same but i would strongly advise that you don't need to follow any of them just keep it in mind that it is half that of the case when the uh, when it's half when of the case when the whole mass is attached at the bottom of the wire now there could be a variation that you have a rod and then there is a mass m prime attached to it now what is the elongation now the elongation would be delta l prime would be two elongations one due to its own weight and other delta x due to the weight that is attached so due to its own weight it is mgl by twice ya and due to the attached one is mgm prime gl by ya so just add the two elongations and you will get the correct answer so next is the concept of thermal stress and strain so if you have a rod so if you have a rod and you heat it right it gets elongated in length say delta l and that is called the strain because it has deformed it's a thermal strain so because of temperature the length has changed we know that length at any temperature is l naught 
वन माइनस वन प्लस अल्फा डेल्टा टी राइट दिस इज द वेरिएशन ऑफ द लेंथ विद राइज इन टेम्परेचर फ्रॉम दियर आई कैन फाइंड डेल्टा एल by l dot is alpha delta t and l delta l by l is alpha t would be the strain because strain is delta l by l so this kind of strain is called as thermal strain and we can easily find out the stress because stress is directly proportional to strain is y into strain here and stress f by a which is thermal stress y as it is and thermal strain is alpha delta t so we are able to find thermal stress this again is very important concept because you can take a rod and you can take a rod and then you can uh, connect a spring here and apply heat and find the deformation or you may find the uh, stirring compression so kx not which will result because a force is being generated due to the elongation of the rod such problems or normally usually asked in the examination is where you know the problem is related with the thermal stress strain have been asked in few last few years so let's go to the next case next is very important concept of poisson ratio poisson ratio is that if you have a rod and if you elongate it with the help of say force then the rod is elongated in length but from side sir the radius goes down radius gets uh, decreased right so there is a variation in the radius and therefore there is a lateral strain this kind of strain where the radius decreases is called lateral strain so this is lateral strain and the ratio of these two kinds of strains lateral to the longitudinal they are very important and we call that as poisson ratio many times questions in poisson ratio have also been asked so how do you define poisson ratio simply the ratio of the lateral strain by longitudinal strain it is simply minus delta r by r divided by delta l by l then the examiner may ask you a question that we have a rod which is elongated and the volume remains constant what is the pr of that rod and if you calculate it by using the same idea and keep volume fixed it turns out to be 0.5 so keep this in mind what poisson ratio is and uh, there could be questions directly asked uh, in this uh, related the concept of poisson ratio let us go to the next slide now then there is another important concept that if you rotate a rod right so naturally because of rotation there is elongation in the rod what is that elongation again it is very easy to do but remember the proper method is that you pick a small element find the elongation in that small element because there will be a force dm omega square or on that small element and then you integrate it out a 1 by 3 factor comes and rest can be easily worked out see all you have to remember is that there is a factor of 1 by 3 rest i can just do it by plausible method see how delta l we know is f l divided by y a in this case f is m omega square r is l into l divided by y a now i can multiply l and multiply divide by l so i just multiplied l and divide by l now a into l is volume mass by volume is density so rho omega square l l l is l cube divided by y so a factor of 3 comes from integration so i mean you can easily make this factor only thing is that you have to remember there is a factor of 1 by 3 so the problem is easily doable and in fact you can do it just by looking at it the only thing is that you need to keep this factor 1 by 3 in mind that in case that a rod is rotated there is a factor of 1 by 3 and you will tell me okay why not to do it a proper method from ab initio like i will take the element integrate it you don't have that much of time there you have to figure the problem figure out the answer in just one minute and here with this method you can do it in just 30 seconds then we have another important constant one is bulk modulus and other is modulus of rigidity like we have young's modulus bulk modulus is defined for fluids and uh, modulus of rigidity again for rigid bodies and it is defined as uh, bulk modulus we know is volume stress divided by volume strain and would be volume stress is pressure because it is defined for fluids and volume strain i told you is minus delta v by v and remember for gases there are two kinds of um, uh, uh, these uh, bulk moduli one is the bulk modulus for isothermal case isothermal case 
which is simply the pressure. The other is the adiabatic bulk modulus, adiabatic bulk modulus, and which is gamma times pressure, where gamma is the ratio of specific heats. And uh, this eta called the modulus of rigidity is given by shear stress by shear strain. So that is the, we call it as a force tangential to the surface divided by A phi. This is how it is defined. Keep it in mind that for rigid bodies, right? Rigid bodies are those bodies which you cannot deform. These constants, all these elastic constants, Y, eta, and B, they are infinity right and also keep in mind that bulk modulus is the only elastic constant that is defined for fluids because fluids are do not have young's modulus they also do not have modulus of rigidity because they cannot withstand shear stress etc then we have the very important topic which is the angle of twist and angle of shear right so what we take a rod and we twist it say by an angle theta this theta is called angle of twist say through x then the length of the rod is l then with respect to the top there is a shear angle phi since both have the same arc x so we know x is equal to uh, theta times r and the same x is equal to phi times l or therefore r theta is l phi and phi is r theta by l but we know that once we release it it will come back and the torque restoring torque is c times theta c you need to remember is pi eta r 4 by 2 l there is no way of deriving it yeah it is just given in ncrt and therefore you need to memorize it that the value of c which is called the restoring constant or uh, torque per unit twist is pi eta r4 divided by 2l at least for the exam day you need to remember it and remember that the question is related to the uh, comparison and proportionality can be asked here and then once we twist it there is the work is done and that work we know is integral of tau d theta its integral tau is c theta d theta that is 1 by 2 c theta square so that is the work done when you twist a wire then we have the last topic in it which is called the bending of beam if a beam is there and then we lower the beam the beam is bent by some delta and that bending is given by wlq 4b dqy it depends on directly on the cube of the length that is more the length easily it can be bended so you can bend it easily but more the width uh, depth then it is very difficult to bend it is inversely proportional to cube of that and of course it depends on what material there a rod is made of so if you ideally choose a rod which has a huge depth and very small length then it is very difficult to bend this rod but under a very huge load it can buckle out right and uh, this is called the buckling effect we can avoid this buckling effect by giving the uh, eye shape to the rod and if you give eye shape to the beam and then you apply a lot of load then it cannot buckle and this is what engineers do when they design bridges and other things where these uh, levers and uh, you know, rods and um, these kinds of beams are used for the stability of the structure. So this is all in uh, quick revision of bulk properties of matter. I hope I did it quickly and you need to do these kinds of revisions very fast because once you are preparing for the examinations, keep it in mind, revise, revise and revise. The more you revise, more are the chances you score better in the examination. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the lecture.